Hello everybody, my name is Maya Joy and today I would like to share with you five things that I know for sure. And these things are based on my experience as a psychic and they're sort of kind of what I've learned from doing about 5,000 readings and just getting to hear the divine guidance that's coming through for my clients. So these are some, some things that I know for sure after all this time. The first thing that I know for sure is that you have a purpose and you have a gift. Everybody comes to earth with a purpose. So one of the most common questions that I get during readings is, what is my purpose? You know, what am I here to do? And I just want to let you guys know that there's always an answer. <laughs> like, there's always an answer. And what's really amazing is a lot of times when people ask the, that question, I will get to see some sort of amazing vision that reveals the information because mostly I work with clairvoyance in readings and a lot of time the visions are of a client sitting with their spirit guide and planning their life like planning the life that they're about to to incarnate into and usually the client is always so excited and I know sometimes once we're here it's like this is not so exciting or life is a lot of drudgery but there's usually so much excitement like yes yes I can't wait yes you know give me challenges yeah like this will finally be the lifetime where I learn to have faith and really really trust and you know this is gonna be the one where I overcome envy and I overcome jealousy and yeah yeah give me a real challenge you know give me a real challenge give me you know the the girlfriend who flirts with everybody so that I can finally learn not to be jealous and just to appreciate the love that I have and there's and there's just it's so funny but there's always like not even just one purpose for being here but there's like usually like a million a million purposes and some of them are like really related to our soul growth and, and helping us to actually like implement the lessons that we've been working on and the energies that we've been working to cultivate in the higher realms. Some of our purpose usually relates to like helping others and sometimes it's helping people that are part of our family or our friends and sometimes it's strangers. I think that what's really funny about incarnating on earth is the fact that we have so much clarity like before we get here. We make these very, very detailed plans about how we're going to accomplish our, all of our goals but then as soon as we like kind of go through the birth canal and we're born like we all just get amnesia and it's really funny if you think about it but it really makes this all so much more exciting because if you think about it if you came here and you knew like exactly what your purpose was like it would really take away a lot of the sense of mystery and adventure because I think the process of forgetting and then remembering is something that our souls take great delight in. Now, society in general makes us, I think, a little bit confused about purpose versus career. So a lot of people can feel like they're not living their purpose because maybe their career like doesn't feel like a purpose. Do you know what I mean? So some careers are very purpose driven. Like if you're an EMT or maybe, I don't know, you're a doctor or you're just doing something explicitly to help people, then it's like, yeah, okay, this is my soul's purpose. But most of us are not doing that. Like there's a need for all kinds of different workers right in society so a lot of people like let's say that they are you know working as an accountant or they're working as a waitress or a waiter or something like that not to say these careers are not meaningful but a lot of times when clients like that come to me they're really concerned they're like my I don't know you know I've been working as an accountant my whole life and I don't really know if I'm making a difference or if I'm achieving my purpose um, and what I want you to know is that you probably are. We have so much like that's guiding us towards our purpose. But if you're really not sure if you're achieving your purpose, I wanted to offer just some hints about what your purpose is, both some internal hints and some external things that we can look to to confirm our purpose. So internally, our purpose usually aligns very, very closely with the dream that we have in our heart. And most of us do have a dream. A lot of us are not willing to speak it out loud, <laughs> but like most of us know, okay, like if this world was a little different, let's say money wasn't an ob wasn't you know a, a limitation and time wasn't a limitation and I could do whatever I wanted, but I had to do something like, what would I really like to do to 
to serve other people or just to cultivate joy within myself. And I remember that in college, at one point in time, I went to some sort of talk and they asked that question. And then afterwards, I went home and I was talking with my boyfriend at the time and I was like, you know what I'd really like to do if, if I just knew I would succeed? And I was like, I'd really like to just give people advice about their relationships. Like I just would want to give them advice about their relationships. Um, and he did not respond that favorably, which is kind of funny, but he was, he was kind of like, N like, I think the path that you're on, you'll make a greater difference. But now like flash forward, like 10 years later, and actually I feel like I'm making a huge difference by giving people advice about their relationship. With our logical minds, they often tell us our purpose isn't possible, but it always is. Cause you know, our spirit will always support us in fulfilling our purpose, but you know, I would have thought at the time, no, there's no way that I can make a living doing this. Like, yeah, I was doing it for free, of course. Like, just telling people advice about their relationships. But, like, I did not believe that anyone would ever pay me to do it. But, actually, they did. Like, so, actually, you know, and, and that'll come up as a theme throughout this. But, you know, when I actually just decided to just go for it, you know, even though it didn't make any sense and follow what my guidance was telling me, right? I find that like the things that are sort of implanted in our heart and the ideas in our heart and soul, like they are possible because they are actually our soul's blueprint. Um, another indication of what your purpose is, is what you're looking for. So a lot of us like are searching for something, like we're searching for something in the world that we don't quite find. So for example, like maybe you have a health condition or something like that and you're searching, searching for somebody to heal you and you cannot find like the exact healing that you're looking for. That may be an indication that your purpose is to discover that healing and offer it to others, you know? And for me, it was like, I definitely grew up in a household where like I would not have been allowed to have a psychic reading so like I never was able to until I was out of the house but then once I was in college I started like be, being like oh, I really want to have a psychic reading I really want to have a psychic reading and I remember my time like looking for my first psychic that I was gonna see like I remember I was just like so specific in what I wanted even though I didn't know anything about psychics I was like I want somebody that's young like I want somebody who's gonna be very energetic and who's going to be like very very happy and i want somebody who can like talk directly with the angels and the spirit guides and who's not going to need to use cards or any tools like i just want the messages like directly from my angels and guides and like i hope that she has like brown hair and it's like, curled and like all this stuff like i had this like clear vision and i went out searching 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 i went to big cities like chicago and i was searching who where is the psychic and i finally realized uh, that it was me. Like, it took a long time. Like, it, it took a long time. It took me, like, five, seven years, and then I was like, oh, like, this person that I've been seeking out, this type of reading that I've been seeking out, it doesn't exist yet because I'm here to bring it into this world. Like, oh, okay, so that's my purpose. And then I think another indication of what your purpose is is, like, what you really, really value. Honest to God, like it does not matter if it's something like you, maybe you have something in your heart that you just really think, oh, this thing is so meaningful. And it doesn't matter like if your parents think it's meaningful, it doesn't matter if society thinks it's meaningful, it matters. What do you find great value in? What in this world would you risk everything for? Would you pay the most money for? I remember thinking like a oh, psychic reading is probably like if it's accurate that's it's probably more value than any like of more value than any other thing that i could ever think of because if you really think about it like if someone can give you accurate guidance about kind of where to invest your time money and energy that's worth a lot i didn't have that much money of course when i was in college but i remember thinking you know i would definitely pay like a thousand dollars for a really good psychic reading now i don't charge that and I don't I don't think that psychics that do are necessarily in their integrity and by the way like I never ever ever really thought that I would be a psychic ever 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 life pushed me into this in a strange way I did know that I I would place tremendous value I would maybe even give up everything that I had if I could really feel like a higher power was speaking directly to me and have the experience of that resonating and so that was an indication these were indications of me for me like about my purpose before I really accepted what it was but there's also some like external hints about what your purpose is so one thing to look for is or to look at is your north node in astrology 
And if you're just stumbling upon this video, I'm a real cheerleader of the North Node. And the North Node is a sign, an astrological sign, the energy of which we wished to step into to grow our soul in this lifetime. And it's typically an energy that is the exact opposite of what we are currently embodying, which is generally our South Node energy or where we came from in childhood or in a previous life. It was the discovery of my North Node that led to me doing this work without finding out that I, I, this person who was had so much Virgo within me, that my life purpose, my, my North Node was to become more Pisces-like. I remember like when I, I'm not a very emotional person or I don't cry a lot, but I remember like just when I found out, I, I remember being so anxious, like when I was about to do like the calculator to find out what my North Node was. And I was like, oh, you know, it's probably gonna be like Capricorn or something. Like I'm probably just here to be a boss and blah, 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 you know? And when I saw that it was Pisces, it was like a tear came down my face and I, it was so much relief. And I was like, oh my God, like that silent dream that I've like had in my heart since I was a little girl that I've never told anybody, like my desire to just be here and learn to connect with spirit and learn to have faith and surrender and like just give up the struggle and the plans and everything and find God really like, that is actually what I'm here to do. And it only took me after discovering my North Node like maybe like 10 days or something before I took the plunge and said, okay, I'm gonna make my life about this. Even though I'm terrified, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Another indication of what your life's purpose is can be found in your numerology with your life path number. And there are other numbers too, like destiny number and stuff like that. But I think focusing on the life path can be really good um, because every life path number um, it corresponds to certain careers and energies again. And so like, if you have no idea what your purpose is, start by like incorporating that North Node energy and whatever's indicated by your life path, it'll get you on, on the right track. For me, my life path number is seven, which I did learn a little bit younger in my life. And you know, seven is about like cultivating intellect and intuition and the quest for truth. And it's a very, very spiritual, life path number, I think I didn't take it as seriously when I was young, but then once I really realized like, hold up here, like, no, like I really am a seven, like, oh, like I actually can like safely devote myself to this quest as my purpose. And after that, things got really amazing. And so, yeah, you have a purpose and you come with gifts and there's so much I could say about gifts and I should probably make a video about gifts and spiritual gifts eventually, but what I wanna say is that our gift is not always something that society is gonna explicitly recognize as a gift. So like a lot of people think, oh, I'm only gifted if I'm like Mozart or something and I play the piano amazing or I'm an amazing athlete or like whatever, you know, some explicit gift. But the most beautiful gifts of the soul usually don't appear like that. You know, I think one of the most beautiful gifts that I ever see in anyone is the ability to listen compassionately. Like, do you know how many lives that you can change and how many people that you can heal if you're a good listener and you can sit there and listen compassionately and that person can feel heard and validated? Like, you will change the world with that. And sometimes our gifts are things that people judge us for. You know, that was certainly like the case for me. I mean, wow, I faced a lot of, I mean, God bless, but like I faced a lot of um, judgment because of like the very few times that I did speak out about messages that I was getting intuitively um, when I was a child that was just not okay. Like in the religion that I was raised in and in the family that I was raised in and people don't always like to hear the truth and stuff. Um, and so I faced criticisms for my gift, my gift. And sometimes I think when you're asking what your gift is, be mindful that it's not necessarily something that you will get a lot of praise for. It might be something that you've actually gotten criticism for. And yet if you, if you use it in like a slightly different way, you know, it becomes miraculous. So like for me, you know, maybe using like my psychic gift to tell my parents about what I knew about their secret love affairs that that's how it came out first. But like, maybe that wasn't the best way, you know, but then when I started to say, wait, hold on, maybe other people want this information. My family doesn't want this, but like, maybe there's strangers out there who need this information and I, maybe I can offer it to them. 
that's when things started to really get magical. Well, point number two of what I know for sure is that you brought friends. Like when you came down to earth, you brought friends. And right, like we can feel so alone when we're here. Like where's my soul group? Where's my soul family? I don't like this reality, it's so lonely. It can feel that way sometimes, but actually in reality, we are surrounded by soul connections, okay? And the number one question that I usually get in readings, mostly because it's sort of my specialty, is like, what is my connection with like blank? And how I do my readings is like, I'll have a photo of the client that shows their eyes. I pretty much get all the information from looking into a person's eyes for about one second. And then they'll send me like a picture of somebody else it could be anyone it could be like a lover it could a lot of times they don't tell me what it is to them which is also fun um but they'll just be like send me a picture of this other person and be like what is our connection what is our soul connection and i've done like thousands of readings and i've only had like one or two where the guides say like oh this isn't really much of a connection <laughs> you know or like oh you're kind of like strangers at the level of the soul like 99.99999 percent of the time when that client felt something towards that other person it's because they had a, a soul connection it might be that that person's part of their most intimate soul group which those are mm. those connections are so divine or it may be that it's like a, a soul mate that you've incarnated with a, a di at different times in different places it may be somebody that you collaborate with in the higher realms because yes you guys we have lives uh, in the higher realms like we we have the jobs here and gifts here but we also have sort of employment or things that we work on when we are up in the higher realms too and so sometimes we like meet get to meet people on earth that are people that we usually work with in the higher realms and those are awesome because usually like there's huge potential for collaboration there sometimes it's a past life lover or something like that what i want people to know is that our soul group is all around us and the reason why we don't always recognize these soulmates that are in our lives is because they're not always playing the role of that person that just dotes on us and supports us and builds us up actually like the souls that love us the most they often volunteer to play the role of like the villain for us um and be you know like i think a lot of times for example like maybe you know the mother-in-law or something like that is actually like really helping us to grow and accept ourselves by maybe being really critical or like something like that but you know i think for example of um my own sister so my own sister and i am so so grateful for her for playing the villain for me like when i was really young so i know because i remember like that i asked her to um challenge me like a lot when i was young so i could come to know my strength and like build self-confidence and so when i was young like every time i ever wanted to do anything or like this is so funny because i see it so clearly from the soul now but like so every time i ever had a dream of anything i would always tell her we shared a room she's a seven too and i don't know we just had this like interesting dynamic and um she would always say like i don't think you can do it I don't think you're going to be able to do that. And it started with me wanting to be like a gymnast when I was young and she was already in gymnastics. And she's like, I don't think you're going to be able to do it. You're not going to be very good at this. You shouldn't even try. And like every time that she would tell me like I was going to fail or I wasn't going to do something, I would work like a five bajillion times harder. And as a result, I was like really successful, like all throughout my childhood. I mean, I was, I often, very often came out on top on everything that I did. And it was like because at home I had this sister who was like definitely a soulmate to me, right? Who was telling me that I was going to fail. And so it made me like maybe a little bit afraid of failure, but then as a result, I achieved great success. And then I came to know my strength and like in knowing my strength and building confidence that gave me like what it would take later on to like take some big risks in my life and to be able to pursue self-employment and like all this stuff. And so I'm really grateful for her, but sometimes like you might want to rethink about some of those connections that maybe feel a little difficult or people that have played a role. And that's really what we're doing here on earth. Like, we're playing roles for each other we are this is a this is life theater this is not 
reality. Our reality is in the higher realms. This is life theater where we play different roles to help each other practice um, skills of the soul and grow and develop. Um, but yeah, like there, yes, we do go through times in life where we might need to just like cultivate our relationship with ourselves. But generally speaking, like you are encountering people that you have soul connections with all the time. And we go to really great lengths to like plan all of these meetings with other soul connections before we get here. And sometimes it's just like a brief meeting with a particular soul. And sometimes it's more extended. But even like, have you ever met somebody like just totally random? Like, like, let's say, for example, that um you let's let's say for example like a package uh, delivery person you know and maybe they come to your door and like you open the door and for a moment like your eyes meet and you something is sparked within you like you feel a little something in your heart or something and you know maybe that day all of a sudden you start to see life a little bit differently or it reminds you i don't know a new energy comes into your life or things like that those events seem really random um, they are not. Those events are planned in advance. Even little things like that, like a certain exchange with a barista at a coffee shop or a package delivery person, all the way from that to like the meeting of, you know, our future spouse or whatever. These, these are all planned in advance, you know, and all of us make these plans to connect with others that we have soul connections with. It's like, we are also excited to come here and be here on earth at this time and like before we come there's like a big big like meeting with everybody who's going to be coming to earth at the same time and we like meet up and it's like yeah i'm going to meet you in like 1999 we're going to meet at a conference you know in 2015 or whatever and like we'll meet on facebook and we'll meet on facebook and we'll meet on facebook and we'll meet on instagram or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean but like it's all planned and so just like open your eyes and trust that when you feel that like resonance with somebody that it actually is because they're a soul connection and they're a friend of your soul. Point number three is that I know for sure is that you have a built-in compass like you have a built-in compass to guide you it, it, life can be confusing sometimes and sometimes we get like so in our heads with analyzing the signs from spirit and stuff that we don't know left from right and it's just crazy okay but like all of us have a built-in compass thank God in heaven because if we did not who knows what we would do once we got here and that compass that you have built in is your heart our heart is always telling us what direction is best for us like your heart is always it's your compass like i will say we don't really have a map for our lives a lot of the times but we do have that compass constantly pointing us in the direction that's going to be best every time that you really do go with your heart and where your heart is guiding you your life will unfold in miraculous ways however it's easier said than done because a lot of times what our heart is guiding us to does not make sense to our logical mind. And so one of the like greatest quests of life in the material dimension is to learn to follow where our heart is leading us and just like trust that it's going to lead us in the right direction. And so what does it feel like when your heart is guiding you, right? Like uh, sometimes it can be different for every person, but it's going to feel like a sense of peace or a sense of love or a sense of calm. It's like when you visualize multiple paths forward, the one that your heart is leading you to is the one that makes you feel the best. And it's oftentimes it is like a just a very nice, like loving serenity. Sometimes we can get confused because our ego can make us feel really good about a path that's not necessarily a match for our heart. So if you tune into something and it's like, yeah, this is gonna make me famous, everybody's gonna love me, or this is gonna make me beautiful, that may not necessarily be your heart, that's probably your ego. But if you tune into something and it's just like, I don't know why, but like I just feel this feeling of like home or safety, that's your heart guiding you, that's your heart guiding you. The reason why, like our heart is our compass, one of the reasons why is because this is a pathway that's really open that like our guides can work with us in or they can work through us in. So what am I talking about? So basically like our guides, they are, their mission, like your spirit guide, like is your primary spirit guide, their mission is to guide you in the direction that's going to be the most abundant for your soul's growth and happiness and everything. 
so a lot of people I think put like unrealistic expectations on their guides because they want their guides to like make choices for them or make things happen for them. I am definitely guilty of this as well. Um, but like our guides are not allowed to do that. Like they operate according to universal rules um, that do not allow them to actually make certain events take place for us, um, but they can come very close. And so how do they do that? So what they do is they input certain feelings in our heart in hopes that we will follow those feelings and make the choice that corresponds to our soul's plan. Does that make sense? So they're allowed to give us feelings. They're allowed to give us signs. But at the end of the day, we like it only works if we take action based on the feelings and the signs they can make it so obvious like what is the best thing for us but if we like turn our back on our hearts or, we're, or we fall into fear and we don't do it you know they've done everything that they can so we really have to understand that a lot of times those feelings of excitement and stuff that come into our hearts, that these are coming like directly from spirit, directly from our guides and that we can trust them. Um, and even if they don't make sense and a lot of times like where our heart is guiding us, it will not make logical sense, but it doesn't need to like, it doesn't need to make logical sense. Um, so anyway, yeah, our guides would really appreciate it if we, um, w did trust in what our heart was telling us more often than not. The fourth point that I want everybody to know is that you are adored and you are celebrated in the higher realms. I think it can be so funny a lot of times like we can get really focused on our mistakes in the material dimension. It's like oh crap you know like I really I really was mean, I really made a mistake, or I failed, or all this stuff, and a lot of people think that, like, their guides are mad at them, like, they think that their guides are judging them, or their guides are punishing them, or, you know, that is not happening, like, what our guides might be doing is giving us every opportunity to succeed, like, and just keep giving us opportunities to succeed, but, no, one of my favorite parts of the reading, like, that, the readings that I do, is getting to hear the messages that the guides have for their clients, their, their person that they're guiding, right? But so they have a certain way where I do readings and I start every reading by just connecting with the guides and angels and just opening up to whatever it is that they want to tell the client. And then I go on to like question and answer and stuff. I often struggle to put into words the the enormous love that is always coming from the guide and angels no matter what they love you like your guides and angels they know you better than you know you you know at least from this level of awareness and they see you and they see you struggling like to try to grow and they find it to be immensely immensely beautiful and they are so proud like if you think of the proudest that you've ever been for anyone in your entire life it magnify that times a hundred billion and you might be just scraping the surface of what your guides feel for you they love all these things about us that we don't even realize that they would love about us so you know it's funny how often a guide will say like or have you know say to me to tell the client like that they love like their personality in this lifetime or even like their they even will like they they love like how we choose to express our soul energy in this lifetime and sometimes that's like through our fashion or through our laugh or like they they love like they love personality they love our sassiness they love our jokes like they love our creativity like they love love like watching the way that you choose to experience life like they absolutely adore it and contrary to what we often feel which is like maybe that you know uh, our spirit allies in the higher realms are like down you know because of our mistakes it's really the opposite like I think that they know there's a knowingness like there's a knowingness that um, they're not really mistakes but there's a knowingness that sometimes we're gonna we're gonna get a little confused like when we're here you know um 
And so they don't pay a lot of attention to that. But actually, like what they do pay attention to in the higher realms, our guides, our angels, our loved ones from spirit are our successes. And some of the coolest things that I've seen in readings are actually parties that go on in the higher realms. Like they're like, like somebody will finally break through like some big soul lesson and they show me just like, like dancing and celebration and like it's crazy. And it's like everybody, like it's like a lot of people, like it's not just your guides it's like your loved ones in spirit past life connections and they're all just like cheering and like clapping and they're so excited and happy for you and it's just crazy like it's so so crazy and it doesn't matter like you know we we can get like so caught up in just the stupidest things and we just think that we're not talented enough or we're not beautiful enough or all this kind of stuff um, but yeah, like we are like, we are so loved and we are so celebrated. I just wish that everybody could feel and see the love coming from their guides and angels the way that I get to see it during readings or even better. And I know that we all will someday, you know, someday, somehow. Um, and, but just know that like, no matter what you've done, that, it doesn't matter like in the eyes of your divine support team they know they know that you've done your best they know that sometimes we can get stressed or we can lose our way and that's expected they love you anyway even now in this moment it's like i really can't put it into words because we don't even know the kind of love that they have for us it doesn't even exist in this dimension but but we we touch tiny bits of it here and there and i think if you just think of the time that you felt the greatest sense of love or out, out like a welling up of your heart and again like multiply that times like a hundred billion and you'll get a sense of what they may feel for you and remember like you know they your guide for example they they have devoted their soul's journey at this point to helping you i mean that is their purpose and in order for them to do that they have to really love you i mean they picked you out of they picked you like out of every single soul in the entire multiverse like they were like no that's the one like this will give me chills like no that's the one that i want to guide that's the one i want to devote my entire soul energy to it's amazing the fifth point that i have learned from all the readings is that i know it can be hard for us to believe sometimes but your life is unfolding perfectly your life is unfolding perfectly i one of my favorite things to do like when i have a little bit of free time is to listen to accounts of near-death experiences and one of the reasons why is because oftentimes they include what's called the life review which is like where right after you die or leave your body you get to see your entire life like like really really like every detail really really fast and when people have this experience they are always like profoundly changed and they say like oh my god like i see now why every single thing in my life needed to happen exactly the way that it did and like i spent so much time and i stressed so much thinking about all my mistakes and there were no mistakes like everything happened exactly according to the way that it was meant to you'll know that there's a divine plan when you try to go against it so like have any of you ever had the experience of like pushing for something like you're determined to make something happen in your life and you go to like great lengths and you try everything and it does not happen that's because it's not part of your life plan and like that you know i think for myself like about my husband and i like from the moment that we first met each other we were trying to leave michigan we live in michigan and we like tried everything like he literally um applied for jobs out of state at least one per day every single day for four years like we sold all of our stuff we literally like picked up and we literally went somewhere else to live and then like we were not able to get our lives together there like no we couldn't find a place like to stay like nothing was working like there was just no way like it was impossible 
for us to make it happen. And that's because we were pushing for something that wasn't a part of the perfect plan for our lives. And eventually once we like surrendered to just like staying here and just being in Michigan, like so many amazing things opened up and we had so much healing like with our families. And suddenly like my husband was able to get like a really a job that like fulfilled his heart in ways that like he had never been fulfilled before. And just like everything started flowing. And that to me is like just a small example of evidence that there is a plan and that the universe does everything to make sure that our plan goes forward. And no matter how much we fight and we did everything like and we also did like magical manifestations and stuff you know like in every new moon everything okay here's our new life like outside of Michigan it didn't matter like it wasn't our destiny to leave and so we're still here you know at least right now and I think a lot of life is that way like sure there is free will choices like for little things like what you're going to eat for breakfast and what you're going to wear today and the specific words that you'll use to express yourself to a loved one or friend or colleague or whatever but the big things who we're going to marry where we're going to live whether or not we're going to have a specific illness or accident when we're going to pass on or when our family members are gonna pass on, what we're gonna do for work, these things are decided in advance and thank God that they are. Because what it means is that we do not have to worry about messing it up or being off path because the most important things in our life are so important that there's no chance that our higher power is going to let them not happen. You know, our lives are like, we've spent so much time and energy as a soul planning our lives that the plan is going to go forward once we get here. We're not going to be allowed just to, to waste it. Um, and we also have to remember that our life is really sacred and it's really interconnected. So to think that we can just mess up our life and that's just it and whatever, oh, I messed up is not quite right because actually like our lives are interconnected with everybody else's lives so like the choices that we make they could have a ripple effect and influence a thousand other souls so we're not going to be allowed to make the wrong choice because if we did then that would also disrupt the life plan of those thousand or ten thousand other people that are in some way are influenced by our choice so as a result everything goes forward exactly as it is meant to be and it's really only our ego or our mind that's like, this isn't right. Like, my life is not going as it's meant to be. Our soul knows that it is. Our soul knows that there is no mistakes, that there are no mistakes, that things are unfolding as they should. Everything in your life is unfolding as it should. You can just take that pressure off of yourself and forgive yourself of anything that you perceive to be mistakes. Those were not mistakes. You were following something within you that told you to make those choices and that something was your life plan and we all have one and all of our plans are unfolding perfectly and we don't need to we don't need to worry we just need to just take a deep breath and enjoy the ride so you guys I hope that you've liked this little abbreviated version of my five things that I know for sure if you made it to the end, God bless you. Thank you for thank you for watching. If you like this sort of thing, definitely feel free to come back any Friday here in the summer or any Tuesday or Friday during the school year for more videos here on the Maya's Dream channel. So thank you for watching and namaste. Bye.